She's the director of the National Centre for Farmer Health, sustaining farm families from Victoria um, as well as through to Alberta in Canada. Now, uh, Susan, Susan, this isn't Clara. Susan is a, uh, a, 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 an avid orchardist uh, in her home country. Uh, she also may have to depart at any moment to provide phone support to her uh, pet who is uh, about to give birth. So uh, hopefully her pet will give her 20 minutes to allow her to share her experiences with you. So uh, welcome, Susan. Uh, thank you. Thanks very much, Phil. Uh, thanks very much for coming uh, to listen to this session today and um, a big hello to my colleagues also from Hamilton, uh, Jackie and Cecilia and Katie Gunn from Adelaide. Um, I'm speaking today about Farm Families, our program that we had trialled across Australia and then moved to trial and pilot in Alberta, Canada. For those of you that don't know anything about the National Centre for Farmer Health, uh, we're based uh, 300 kilometres west of Melbourne in Hamilton, which is an agricultural area, and we partner with uh, Deakin University School of Medicine. Our motto is definitely to make a difference to farmers' lives in a, in a positive way, and we do that through uh, education and training, research, uh, interactive uh, websites, and direct service delivery. We also partnered with the Farm Safety Centre, which is in Raymond in Alberta uh, and located 247 kilometres from Calgary. A bit of a background on the Sustainable Farm Families program. It started out actually with a fund, a grant from Rurdic in 2003 to develop a program and co-design one with farmers uh, to get them to think about their health, well-being and safety in a business context. What we actually found is that the program was really well received by the farmers and it went from broadacre farmers to then going to dairy farmers to cotton and sugar farmers and to pastoral farmers, vinerons and orchardists. And it seemed to be able to be adapted and repeated and transferred. And last year we completed a pilot with fishing farm families and again adapted it for fishers people. We've rolled it out to over 2,300 Australian farmers since then. They do have to give a substantial amount of time of two or three, um, sorry, four days over a two or three year period. It's been numerously evaluated and published. Um, and in 2014, after four years of negotiations, uh, Alberta wanted to adapt the program for their farming populations and it involved Ag Alberta and also Alberta Health um, as partners. So um, this is us going from uh, Australia over to Alberta in Canada. Uh, that's the Farm Safety Centre in a very small town of around 3,000 people in uh, Raymond, Alberta. And there's the adaption of the Farm Families Resource Kit that farmers get into the Alberta model. Every aspect of the Farm Families program includes a health assessment and review for farmers, um, group discussion and training, and then reflection and action. So it, one of the key things was to try and ensure the congruency of the Australian program was repeated and transferred uh, in Alberta. Um, those three key aspects were things that we held really fast to, that if they were going to adapt it, it needed to make sure it included those three elements. Each farmer gets a health assessment and review. The information sharing is very much around group discussion and table discussion. What does this mean for me? What does this mean for my family? What does this mean for my farm business? And then what they were going to do to take action. The results, um, part of the um, agreement was that it would be externally evaluated by uh, an Albertan university or consultants and SWM consultants uh, were appointed that by Alberta government. And this was some of the early stuff that, it's not stuff, sorry, early evaluation reports we got back, that it had maintained the Australian theoretical congruence and that 
farmers were receiving it really well and it drew on the health belief model and the uh, trans theoretical model and stages of change. So that was very promising for us. That was after they'd done about uh, four or five groups, about 50 farmers at that stage. So my objectives today is to now share with you uh, the different baseline health characteristics of Victorian farmers of, and Albertan farmers some of the different behaviours, and then to explore, and I'm really happy to take questions, um, what do we think some of the differences are and why might this have happened? So looking at then what the differences are, how has their health, wellbeing and safety goals and actions may be differed by the different locations. So in Victoria, Australia, um, we're looking at 37 locations. Uh, so these are workshops that have been held for at least the first two of the workshops. Um, and that's just to show you some of the interaction. We do a supermarket tour with the farmers to teach them how to read labels around diet and nutrition. And that's a group at Yar Peat in the Wimmera that we worked with. And then in Alberta, very different farming situations. Um, they're the locations of 44 workshops. I would like to say that around 70% of these workshops were held with Hutterite communities. One of the things that um, really surprised us was that the Hutterites, uh, which are a kind of a closed um, religious community, are a bit similar to the Brethren, um, were keen to engage with us uh, and actually do this for their communities with fairly only minor adjustments. So the methods are 81 sites in total, 37 Victorian and 44 in Alberta. Cross-sectional, the study period is the workshops held from 2011 to 2018. We had ethics from Southwest Multidisciplinary Ethics Committee and for Alberta, they were viewed as a health program, so an equality improvement program. So uh, they actually were exempt from getting um, ethics. And as I said, over 70% are Hutterite communities. So these are just examples of farmers having their assessments getting measured and weighed and tested. Some of the things that we do are height, weight, BMI, obviously, waist circumference, blood pressure. In Australia, we do a fasting blood glucose. Uh, Alberta chose to do an HbA1c, so we're missing bits of data there. Uh, and a lipid profile using a point of care um, method, but after a 10-hour fast. We use the depression, anxiety and stress scale, the DAS21. There's a safety survey. Our Australian diabetes risk is very different to the Canadian diabetes risk, but we've used those. And three questions from the very famous alcohol audit. We used action planning as SMART goals and then behaviourally anchored self-rating scales for people to assess how they'd progressed on their goals. So I hope this isn't overwhelming. Um, so this is the baseline health factors. So you've got Alberta and you've got Victoria and then you've got them divided into male, female. What I've highlighted for you is where the means are the highest. So we can see, for example, that the Australian population, the Victorian population was a much older group. So you've got 51 um, average for males and 50 for females versus 42 in the males and females. What was interesting though, that the Albertans, um, in terms of mean, had a much uh, higher BMI. Um, there was no difference really in cholesterol. Uh, blood pressure, you can see that the Victorian males had higher blood pressure and the Albertan females. But the, um, if you add the diastolic and um, systolic, you can see that the majority of the hypertension was actually in the Victorian cohort. Um, and that the waist range coincides with the BMI measurements. If we then have a bit of a look at um, their health behaviours, now um, some of the Albertans did not complete, so it's a little bit confusing and that's why I've put the ends very small here for you um, because it's not 867 in those cases. 
but the message is still the same. In Victoria, we had far more males attending these workshops. Um, Alberta had more females. Uh, very few people smoked in Alberta in comparison to the Victorian population, which was still very low. I think this is um, an interesting observation that 90 or 91 per cent of the uh, Victorians said that their health was either good to excellent in comparison to only 70 per cent or 71 per cent of the Albertans who were actually younger. In terms of body pain, um, the Albertans had 34% of them complained of moderate to very severe body pain. Not a lot of difference from the Victorians, but nonetheless still pretty high. That's one in three. Uh, in terms of alcohol consumption patterns, uh, far more Victorians consumed alcohol at 86% in comparison to 75 The Hutterite communities certainly consume alcohol. They make it themselves and alcohol problems uh, was certainly an issue. And then I think the other big difference was the amount of physical activity. Victorians were actually far more physically active, getting their 30 minutes a day, than the Albertans. So looking at that, there's quite a difference in, in how we're looking at these two groups. So Alberta's colours are gold and mountains. So I've made Alberta gold for you and Victoria blue. Um, but what I think is interesting here is in terms of looking at risk factors, then we can see that 70%, 77% of the Albertans were either overweight or obese in comparison to 69 of the Victorians, which fits also with those higher means for waist circumference. So they were younger, but they were carrying more condition. If we then look at um, hypertension risk being greater than 140 over 90, we can see that um, for the Albertans, 43% of them had high blood pressure. And again, remember, this is quite a younger cohort. And then we can see here that nearly 50% of the Victorian males had hypertension. So quite a difference there. And if we look at the women, it's not as marked, but we can see 27% of the women had hypertension and 33% of the Victorian women. Does that make sense to everybody? No? Yes? Yeah? When we looked at alcohol, so of those people that said that they consumed alcohol, so you remember it was 86% for Victoria, we noticed that the patterns of consumption is different. So this is based on the NHMRC 2001 guidelines of more than six standard drinks in one occasion if you were a male or more than four standard drinks if you were a female. So short-term, high-risk binge drinking. And we can see here that the males, 44% of the males binge drink at least monthly but in comparison to the Victorian males, where 67% of them reported on the audit tool of um, high-risk binge drinking. We can see here too with the females, 28% of the Albertans, females binge drink, and comparison to almost uh, double with the 43% of, of the Victorian women. So here you get the picture of very different patterns of consumption of alcohol, but not as big, which is interesting. So if we just go back again and think about, okay, so people come in, they've had their health assessment review, they've had a one-on-one -on -one with a nurse, a health professional trained in pharma health, They've sat in groups, they've had information and group learning, uh, and then they're asked to reflect on what this means for them, the family and the farm business, and what actions they're going to take. So this is looking at the actions that were written down by each participant. Um, obviously, people can do one or more actions, so you can see we've got 2,994 actions. The gold is Alberta and the blue is, um, right, thank you. 
uh, and the blue is Victoria. So with the Albertans, it's beautiful really because you can see that the Albertans are focusing on weight management, diet and nutrition and improving their activity. Um, you can see the Victorians are focusing on stress management, farm safety and health follow-up, which given the blood pressure results is probably a good thing also. Uh, you can also see the Victorians are also focusing on weight, diet and fitness, but not to the same level as the Albertans. When the participants come back um, 12 months later or six months later, they have to rate how they've performed on a behaviourally anchored rating scale. So this is one, thought about it, got started, followed through, had an impact others could see, or great results way beyond my expectations. What's really pleasing here is we can see that the majority of both Victorians and Albertans scored at least a minimum of three with followed through with moderate results, which those of you that know the stages of change, that's actually really fantastic. These ones had an impact that others could see and this was great results beyond my expectations. Um, very few, mostly Victorians, did absolutely nothing or only thought about it. So from our perspective, it's wonderful to see the actions and the um, follow-up rating scores occurring and people feeling like they're changing behaviours. So in summary, the Albertans had a higher BMI, um, waist circumference and did less activity. The Victorians had higher risks for CVD and were more likely to consume alcohol at high risk levels. The goal settings reflected those differences and the area and environments. Uh, and one of the comments was from Alberta that they now know their risk factors to address their health. It was interesting for us to see the larger focus on farm safety in Victoria and having had further conversations around this, it was pointed out that in Hutterite communities, only one person would be responsible for the um, occupational health and safety, so they would write it down and that would be their responsibility rather than all the farmers writing that down because they're working in communes. This is an infograph that they did after um, 408 people and I just wanted to show you that the Hutterite communities had said a lot around um, safety even though it didn't show up in those action plans because only one person would be responsible. So in conclusion, repeatable and transferable, good intentions and good retentions, it reflected the health risks. Um, keeping and getting the data wasn't always easy. We had some problems with um, not getting the data or people not being as vigilant as we would like and uh, obviously people make the difference. So thank you very much for listening to me and I think I'm right on 20 minutes. So thank you.